Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Simplicity Electricity. First of all, I would like to apologize because I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded, and I know I've gotten a couple of new subscribers along the way, and I really appreciate it, and I'm sorry that I haven't been able to bring you guys new content, but uh, college is over, the semester is over, summer's here, so it's time to show you some simple ways to do some simple things. Okay. So I've noticed on YouTube uh, recently that a lot of people have been hard drive mining to get uh, this thing called Burst Coin. Now this video is not about that, but I found it pretty interesting because of the word mining. And it got me to thinking about um, just how many hard drives people may have lying around that they don't even know they have and they may just chunk them or throw them away, but really they can be pretty important. So uh, take this old DVR for example. Uh, now this thing uh, is about four years old. I found it at a Goodwill. No one was going to use this thing. Uh, clearly DirecTV didn't need it. The previous owner didn't need it and it was probably just going to end up in a garbage pile. <clears throat> so I figured hey why not take it and show you guys something really cool that you can do with this old DVR. So uh, what you're going to want to do is open this thing up and um, I can uh, show you how to do that here in a second and you'll find that there's a little bit of a surprise inside. Okay, so right here, I know that you can't see it that well, but uh, there is a hard drive that you can see through these vents. Now this hard drive is a terabyte, which uh, is actually really good for today, you know, because of all the storage that people need. And this is a hard drive that could fit in someone's desktop. And it seems pretty silly to me that someone would throw this thing away when you have a perfectly good hard drive inside that you could utilize elsewhere. Well, um, this specific model is called an HR44, by the way, if you're curious. So a lot of newer hard drives, or newer DVRs, have these larger hard drives in them, like a terabyte, two terabytes. I heard that some even have four. And there's a lot of videos on YouTube of people upgrading these and showing you that you know, you can always save more TV shows and this and this and yada yada. Well, I was thinking, why don't you just take this hard drive out and utilize it on your PC? And of course there are plenty of videos explaining that as well, but I figured I'd show you my own little variant of it. So on the sides here, you're going to see five rectangular clips and there's one up front. So um, I personally found this a little bit frustrating. Uh, there's videos explaining how to do this and how to release these clips, but for some reason it was just a little bit more difficult for me so I'm not going to showcase that part but really if you're never going to use this DVR box and just want the hard drive I don't see why you couldn't just tear the thing up to get the hard drive because frankly that's what I did a little bit but uh, let's go ahead and get the top off of this and just kind of show you guys what's inside first of all the clips kind of look like this. They make it look a little bit different if you have a different kind of DVR or you may not even have clips at all. You may be lucky and just have screws. But regardless, that's what it looks like if you need to know. So here's the inside of the DVR. Uh, nothing too special. Uh, but what we're really worried about is this thing right here. So if you do have one, there's a little bitty hex screw that you need. I believe it's called a T10, but I may be wrong. And this is probably only going to be for DirecTV DVRs. It may be different for DISH, so just so you know. And um, it's not going to show it on camera too well. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, wait, there we go. So you'll notice the little bitty hole right here. So basically, a lot of people just basically call these security screws. And what they do is they have little bitty holes in the center of them aside from just the hex that make them not difficult to get out but it's difficult to find a screw or that will fit them a screwdriver excuse me so uh, let's go ahead and get these off and I will uh, fast forward the video and show you guys what it looks like when it's completely taken off Okay, so once you go ahead and get the screws off, you can just pull this little gate, cheese grater looking thing. You can toss it to the side, 
and the hard drive is right here prime for picking um, you're also going to have a couple of little bitty hex screws on each side and I believe there'll be some over here as well and you're going to want to go ahead and get those off and then the hard drive should just come right out okay once you get these two grates on the side removed, all the cables are unhooked, uh, you can go ahead and remove your hard drive and um, you can examine it and be proud of your accomplishment. And you can see it without the little prison bars hiding it. Um, also on this board, I mean, if, if you're someone who likes parts and someone who likes to build their own things there's a couple of little usable parts that you could probably take off this board and use but such as the fan or something like that but uh, we're not going to use any of that right now uh, let's go ahead and see how we can get into this hard drive and clear off any data that might be on it okay so um, there are several ways to get inside of this hard drive now a lot of new DVRs, uh, mostly the new ones in fact, have certain settings that uh, prevent this hard drive from being powered up in any other way except for, well, on the actual DVR it came with. Uh, but um, of course there are ways to get around these settings and um, you know you can find those on the internet of course, but uh, we're going to try the simplest way first. Now, I suppose an easy way would be to just plug this into your computer, set up the connections, and, you know, hope for the best and see how it goes. But, um, I find that can be a little time consuming, and plus, I wouldn't be able to show off this. So, uh, this is a USB 3.0 to IDA SATA adapter. Uh, most of you guys may have never seen one of these, or maybe you have. So, basically, what this little thing does is it allows you to to connect uh, different kinds of hard drives, um, I believe up to three at once in fact, uh, to your computer. And basically the way that you access the connection is through USB. And of course if you buy one of these off of eBay or Amazon, um, it comes with all the connections that you would need. But uh, let's go ahead and try this out. So uh, this is a SATA hard drive. So as you can see, the connections look very similar. Well in fact they're the same connections. So you should be able to just plug this thing in and then you can connect uh, your power, your USB and your external power going to the actual hard drive and you should be able to access it on your computer and hope for the best and we're going to do that right now. Okay, so assuming that you have the adapter, uh, after you have your hard drive connected, you're going to want to have uh, this running to a power outlet and you're going to want to have this USB running to uh, a USB port on your computer. Uh, now, of course, again, if you are using a desktop or something like that, you would just go ahead and have this hard drive plugged in by itself and you wouldn't need any of this. But assuming that you are using an adapter, you want to wait for your computer to be completely powered on and completely to the home screen or wherever you have it. And then you're going to want to press this little switch on the side to turn the adapter on. Uh, I find that it doesn't really work. Uh, it doesn't display any kind of notification if uh, you have the adapter on when your computer is still turning on. So just go ahead and wait uh, for everything to be powered on and then this thing should light up. Okay, once you have deleted all the volumes are all the partitions. The number displayed here should be the same as the number displayed over here. What this basically indicates is the amount of storage space that this hard drive will have. The number displayed here will never be the exact same as as advertised on the hard drive itself. So for example the hard drive is advertised as one terabyte. However you will only get this much storage space to use. The extra gigabytes that aren't displayed here are basically used as files to help keep the hard drive running. Now uh, I'm sure that you could find a way to delete those files but why would you ever want to do that because your hard drive would never work. But let's go ahead and walk you through the process of creating a new simple volume. What this basically does will help make sure that your hard drive is completely formatted and usable. And you only have to go through this process once. So we're going to go through the setup wizard and we're going to click next and we're going to end up on this page. So what this basically indicates is the maximum disk space in megabytes. And I don't really see a need to change this number. And of course you can edit around 
if you want to, but really why would you ever want to change it? You want the maximum amount of space that you can get to store all those family photos. Okay, um, here you can assign the following drive a letter. So uh, what basically this indicates is that for most Windows machines it utilizes the letter C or in this case maybe D and those letters will not be displayed here but uh, you just want to pick a letter that you haven't used yet so let's go ahead and use S for simplicity and you also have the option to not do either of these two and just continue through the process but I don't recommend this this option basically indicates that uh, you can create an NTFS folder and what this basically does is it makes it easier for the drive to boot in other computers and it makes it more easily identifiable. Now since this is a desktop hard drive I don't expect you to be carrying it around to different locations or switching it from PC to PC. Now uh, if you were going to do that uh, you would probably want to pick this option or maybe if it was a smaller hard drive that you wanted to carry around. But uh, for my case, all I need is assign the following drive a letter because I'm going to keep it with the exact same Windows machine that I'm using. We're going to click Next. Uh, for the file system, I recommend that you keep it as NTFS, especially because it is a rather large hard drive. Uh, the unit size, I would always leave that to default. And for the new volume, uh, we can delete that and create a volume label. So the volume label will basically be the name of the new hard drive. And I'm just going to change it to one terabyte. Of course, you can make it whatever you want to. We're going to uncheck Perform Quick Format because we want the entire hard drive to be formatted and completely wiped of all extra data. <coughs> I'm going to click Next. You can go through the settings here and make sure that they're all correct and they all should be kind of similar to mine but of course if you want to change things you're more than welcome to click finish and down here you're gonna see formatting and you're gonna have a percentage displayed here in a moment for larger hard drives it will take longer to format and with this one I expect it to take quite a while but uh, we will come back when this is through formatting and I will show you guys how to finish out this process Okay, well that took about a good hour and a half, but it appears that the hard drive is completely formatted and it has a complete healthy primary partition. And again, depending on your PC and its performance, you know, this could take a little bit more, a little bit less time. It also depends on the disk storage. But anyway, whenever it's finished, it'll bring up uh, this screen right here as well. And you should see the hard drive that you just created down at the bottom, usually around where your primary drive is. So what we can do is we can now use this hard drive as we would any other external storage device or internal. Uh, so over here I have two video files uh, that both of them combined are about 53 megabytes. So uh, these are video files that I was using to help make this video while the drive was formatting. So if we transfer them we see that in literally less than two seconds they're completely transferred and rendered in. All right, so let's test something else. Uh, we've tested the speed of this hard drive, but now let's see what happens when we turn it off and reboot it to the desktop. All right, we should see it pop up momentarily. And of course, the, it is connected via USB 3.0, so it will transfer files relatively quickly and it boots right back up and we can see that the two files that we put in there are still there and I believe that we are done here it will let me skip the files and it's completely reading the files that I input correctly so I'm pretty sure that this hard drive is ready to be used in any other computer or application that you want to use it for okay guys this has been Simplicity Electricity hope this helps and I will see you next time